All right, let's talk about regular show. What's awesome about cat videos? Cat videos. Cat videos are freaking awesome. You it know was, why? Because they're cute and they distract you from things. It's true. But I like that um, it was basically the equivalent of like introducing your parents to YouTube for the first time. Well, yeah, but I like the, I like the, the factor of getting out of trouble. Like they were obviously goofing off. Like more of yes. you brought everybody in the room. They're like, look at the internet, guys, and we're slacking well, off. Well, how many it. times have you have you been on the computer when you're not supposed to, and your parents come in like, what are you doing? Oh yeah. And it's like, look at this cute cat video. Hey, you said, Charles, are you still on my computer the boss button? And you set up a program that you can hit like to cover up what you're doing. It, like opens up like a fake Excel spreadsheet or mm. something. Yeah, 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 I know. I worked for it. Yes. But uh, yeah, I could understand. Like I could have. I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then he's like, I want to write you up. And then so like, no, so the cats. so the episode starts with um, we have Mordecai and Rigby and everyone are on the computer when they're not supposed to be, and we haven't gone back on on regular show. We haven't gone back to the shared computer thing in a while. I was actually thinking about that recently. They haven't gone. There was entire episodes dedicated to sharing the computer at one point, and we haven't really talked. You know, seen that in a while. And so they're on the computer, and Benson storms in and uh, decides to start screaming at them. Well, he, they were going to get in trouble, and they're like, hey, why don't you sit down and look at cat videos? And then he gets completely entranced. Yes, he's cat hypnotized videos. with cat videos. And he spends an entire night watching cat videos, which I think everyone can relate to finding something on the Internet and being obsessed to the point where they stay up all night looking at it. Well, you lose track of time. Yeah, I'm like that with Wikipedia. I could stay on Wikipedia all day. Yeah, I just, and YouTube. But, YouTube, yeah. Tumblr, you could just like sit there and then before you know it, the whole day's gone. <clears throat> yeah. So um so they go to have their morning meeting and they're like, Where's Benson? And Benson staggers out of the house and he's like, Oh, I was watching cat videos all day. And then he runs off and he, he uh he goes home. And what and... I love about it, he go you know, he goes to get a new <laughs> phone. He has a flip phone That's right, that won't yeah. load videos very fast, and that was like a commentary. Like he probably has like a three G or a one X phone. He had a flip phone, so he needs a smartphone so he can watch cat videos faster, <clears throat> and that's why he skips work. Yes. So, um, so then we see him at home, and he's pretty much wallowing in his own filth at that point, shoving oh. cereal into his mouth. Yeah, he he's living the guy dream. He's just like yeah. lying there. Also, he had a cat. Which out of nowhere. Out of Wait, nowhere. did he always, he never had a cat, right? I don't think he did. I never no. remember one in his apartment. So, um yeah, and then uh what, was that when he got captured? He sees the video of that uh director, the cat Masterson or something like that, and he's like, Oh, you wanna see how I make my movies and come meet right, uh, right, the right. grumpy cat or whatever uh It was that. basically grumpy cat, yeah. yeah. And so Benson goes to the studio and they they suit him up. They're like, oh, this is part they of the They put him in a motion capture suit, which was fantastic. Suit, suit and like send him into a room, and then you don't know what happens to him. Right. And then Mordecai and Rigby, they're like, oh crap, Benson is missing, and the park is falling apart. And yeah. They had they're like, it's we need your Benson fault. back. Yeah, we need Benson yeah. back. Well, they left Pops in charge, and Pops was going to assign old timey dances to everyone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so they go to the studio, and they find this dude who. Looks like a cat, has weird hair that looks like cat ears, and uh, he uh, changes them into cats. What well, he didn't change them into cats. He, like, he, that was weird. I'm not really sure how that was supposed to work. Well, it, was it was like, like the, the holodeck. holodeck. Yeah. yeah, it was like the holodeck. Um, so they all have my mocap suits. He basically captures them because they ask for where Benson is, and they shoot them with blow darts. Like they shoot them and tranquilize them, and they wake up, and they're in the holodeck with the mocap suits on. Like, what's going on? And then he has his, you know, monologue. And then, boom, they just, he turns everything into yes. cats. And I think Mordecai and Rigby made adorable cats. They Especially cool Mordecai. He yeah. looked really adorable as a blue cat. Their designs were fun, yeah. Cat people. <laughs> and um, and then uh, they, they go through all this trippy stuff. And then they find Benson. And Benson is kind of a creepy-looking cat. Well, Vince is creepy looking, and he also assumes the personality of a cat. He's like, my name he is Little Benny. He became a cat, yeah. yeah. 
he became a cat and um he uh he started acting weird and well, he's acting like a cat he was doing cat stuff he's playing like a big ball of yarn and yes you know walking around all fours and um they have to snap him out of it and try to escape and then they have their typical regular show like showdown with whoever the crazy person is and it was it, it was good because you know in regular show we have sometimes we have very serious episodes well not as serious as regular show gets where it's about relationships or you know it's about friendships or whatever and then you have these episodes that are completely utterly off the wall like insanity that are either like a reference to something or just one big joke and it, you like the silly episodes so yeah. you know i'm surprised they even went this fancy because they always go into some meta world for no reason like stuff always happens to them where in that, they're in that purple world and things oh, appear the the filter the filter yeah and so it was funny to me that they actually bothered to put them in a holodeck and mole cap suits and this guy has this whole elaborate explanation why he you know this stuff works i'm like what that, that in past episodes, they just go into other dimensions or other planets or whatever for whatever reasons. Yeah, for whatever. They don't really need reasons. Yeah, yeah. so they. It, this time it was it's, interesting. I, I love regular show because it's, in some ways, it's so incredibly relatable and grounded in, in parts of reality. Like, you know people like the cast of regular show. And then sometimes it just goes off the wall crazy. Like, they have these wacky adventures that... Don't always make sense. And... Oh, I love the fireworks that comes to mind when they had to go get fireworks. Yes, exactly the fireworks episode. So, so that was regular show. Um, I think it was a pretty good episode. It was a fun I, episode. I enjoyed it. I did because it was a commentary pretty, on the internet. Culture. Yes, it was. It was. It was a very uh, relatable episode to being entranced with the internet. So then we had um, Steven Universe, a new Steven Universe. Nightmare Hospital. Um, it's literally called Nightmare Hospital. It's called Nightmare Hospital. And um, it was. this is the first episode we've had since July, so it was a very long break. And uh, I'm glad it came back now and not in a couple of months because it was a pretty long wait after the last batch of episodes that we had. And um, funny because the last episode that we had was so had so much to do with the gems. And this one, they didn't appear at all. So no, it was, was kind of like... It was basically a Stephen and Connie adventure. Yes, yeah. But it was a little dark. Well, a little dark. As much as dark you can get, having an episode called Nightmare Hospital. And you come from a different place like a kid. A kid watching that, they, it's like spooky for them, right? The dark hospital and the monsters. Well, also, anything to do with those gem monsters is... You You remember the, the last episode about that where Garnet finds them and... Mm -hmm. She's horrified. So right. that was pretty dark. Right. So in their world, it's terrifying. But for us, like, coming from, like, playing Dead Space 2 or Silent Hill, you know what a nightmare hospital really and is. And like you said, you said uh, you thought it was a little inspired by The Thing. There was definitely yeah. some horror movie influences in there with the tilted camera angles. and. Oh, that's a very Sam um, Raimi-esque way of filming. One horror. thing I notice, well, okay, so the, the episode starts off with Stephen and Connie are riding Lion. They come back to her house after a sword training session I'm assuming with Pearl mm -hmm. and uh, they rush in because Connie's mom is coming home and Connie doesn't want her mom to know what they've been doing because her parents are especially her mother are incredibly overprotective helicopter parents who you know they have to know what their kid is doing at all times I know that's especially relevant for me I know how that is right I, I think I think a lot of only children know what that's like that's really rough like and I kind of I kind of relate to Connie in that respect that, you know, being an only child, your parents tend to hyper focus on you and, and you know. So um, they hide the sword because they don't want uh, her mom to find it. And she finds it anyway and confiscates it and gives Connie an earful. And uh, then she gets called away to the hospital for mysterious reasons. So Stephen and Connie decide uh, we're going to go to the hospital and try to grab the sword back because it's Stephen's mother's sword and it's very important. And Connie should have it at all times. So one thing I love about this show is that anytime the tone changes, it literally changes in a visual sense on the show. So the minute the scene changes to um, they arrive at the hospital with Lion, 
you get a green, this creepy neon green palette. And they've done that before on the show and it's really effective. The, the, the palette change is really, um, it's a really effective tool to convey certain feelings on the show. And if you notice any episode that's super emotional or something very important is happening, the palette changes drastically. Well, regular show does it. Regular too. show does it as well, but it it that's more like when things get silly. They usually put that orange filter the, everything on everything. Is orange, this yeah. there's different palettes depending on what the tone has changed to. But I just and I, I also like that in this scene they did the weird camera angles and stuff, and um, it was just very effective. So anyway, so they um, they find Connie's mom and she's. Got this. Well, patient. she's checking on a patient, but that's where I was confused because we know what the patient is. Like, you know, if you've been watching the show, you keep up, you know what is under the blanket. Right. But it's like, I thought she was a doctor. Like, even I could look like that. Hey. That was the only thing I couldn't get past in this episode was here she is a doctor and she sees two of these gem monsters, two of them. And she's like, why aren't you in your room? Why aren't you with Dr. So and so, whatever? And it's like, you don't see that that's not a person? Not a, it's got like eight arms? Yeah, it, it, it was weird. It's just like, I guess we're supposed to believe that she, like, adults in, 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 the, in Steven's world are so caught up with their own stuff, their own lives, their own routine, that they can't see past it. She's very stubborn. Yeah, yeah, that this, anything to her is just a patient. She doesn't see that this creature has four arms. One of them is gigantic. It has no face. And the other one is all arms. Yeah. And, you know, it's like these are abominations. So I, I'm not sure, but um, I thought that it's it may be safe to say, or at least, you know, possibly, that Peridot might be the one um, causing these Jeb monsters to appear. Because she was also at the kindergarten a while back. We saw her at the kindergarten. And she's the only one that we know for a fact is running around. She's stuck on the planet, but she's running around doing stuff. Right. So, like, um, Lapis and um, Jasper are stuck at the bottom of the ocean. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, as far as we know, they're kind of, that's what's going on with them right now. But Peridot is running around. Her pod was left open you know um yeah she escaped with a little helicopter hands and then and then we saw her escape kindergarten so i think it's safe to say that peridot is probably the one causing this stuff she's like happen. inspector gadget she's like, <laughs> just does weird stuff with her body Peridot is a great entertaining character peridot is fun um so anyway so um you know uh connie and steven um bump into connie's mom and Connie's mom is yelling at, at Connie, why, why are you trying to get the sword back, blah, blah, blah. And the monster, the, there's two gem monsters running around, and they both start attacking them. And for the remainder of the episode, Connie's trying to convince her mom to let her have the sword so that she can fight these monsters with Steven. Right. But it ha honesty had to happen. It was a message about being honest with each other. Like, Connie's mom can't see past her own... Um, like uh, parenting, like overprotectiveness, and Connie doesn't trust her to understand magic and all that yes, stuff. Yes, there's so, a disconnect between the two of them, and yeah. the longer that Connie has been hanging out with Stephen and seeing more of their world, the less connected she is to her own parents because she feels that they understand nothing about anything. Right. So it was kind of nice to have this resolution because um, it was kind of a long time coming. And I always, maybe it was just me, but I always got the impression after um, the Alexandrite episode where they went to dinner with, oh, yes. uh, with her parents, yeah. that um, I always got the impression that they were kind of just tolerating Stephen and his family. They were like, you know, they were okay with them, but they weren't like, well, you that, know. That, that's like, uh, you know, there's certain people who, there's a rigid way they look at things and how people should be. So Stephen and his father and the Jeffs don't fit in this, you know, they're, they're around peg going into this. Exactly. Hole. Well, so for yeah, them, Connie like, even says, like, you're not a nuclear family. Right, exactly. So that that pretty much, you know, summed it up. Well, that was, that's, that's, the, that's the simplest 
explanation it's for the, the complex way they look at things and they look at Steven and it's like you know, they just see this unachiever, this underachiever, this weird kid. This weird he kid doesn't go to school. Yeah. yeah, doesn't go to school. So <clears throat> it's like, why are you friends with him? Yeah. yeah. So, um, by the end of the episode, Connie basically grabs the sword. Um, she takes two seconds with Stephen to get rid of the monsters, and uh, Connie and her mom kind of come to terms with the fact that they need to be more understanding towards each other. Uh, and it but was... we noticed something. You notice how well they fight together, and that Steven can control his bubble <clears throat> and shield almost perfectly. Steven is now basically effortless at controlling his stuff. Yeah. However, I find it really interesting that, so Steven is controlling the bubble and the shield, and Connie is controlling the sword, which all of that belonged to his mother at, at one point. Right. So it's kind of like her, she kind of split her her... Her fighting aspects kind of split so that she, you know, now Connie is is the mm -hmm. controls the sword and it, I don't know. I kind of I find it kind of interesting that like they have this duality now and. Uh, but there was a missed opportunity, and you know what it was. It was a missed opportunity in the show to really blow not only the uh, uh, her mother's mind or everyone's mind if they had fused. Two oh, monsters. we haven't even gotten to that yet. There will come a time when right. that's going to come. Well, wouldn't up. that have been amazing? That would have been well. It'll happen because I I truly believe that they don't the 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 writers and the artists on this show do not leave anything open ended. Everything comes back, and this show has some of the best continuity I've ever seen on any show. Yeah, it will happen because remember a few episodes ago when Greg was talking to Stephen and Stephen and Connie accidentally. Fused, fused in front you. of him, yeah. so it will happen for for her parents as well. So we had this nice little resolution, and um, and you know Connie and her mom kind of came to this understanding, and she's like, "I'll try to be more understanding to the stuff that you're doing, and I'll I'll lay up a little bit on the you know on the parenting." And Connie's like, "I won't lie to you anymore." So that was kind of nice. And at the end of it, Stephen's hugging his mom's sword, and he's like, "You know." Yeah, he so that was mom. that was really that was nice. Um, and then, uh, so I'm looking forward to the next few episodes. They've actually released the titles of, I think, every single episode for the rest of the season. And it looks to be like it's going to be nuts the rest of the season. So I think the next episode is going to be another lighthearted one. It's supposed to be about Sadie. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Um, and then finally this week we had Gravity Falls. Yes, the last Mabel Corn. The last Mabel Corn. Um, so basically there was more going on with Ford and, and now Bill came back into the picture, which he hasn't been around for a while. No, way more. We finally get answers to what Bill's relationship to Ford is. That was important. Like, yes, we didn't know anything about what, how Bill related to him or what he did. And now we got those answers. And it's it's pretty interesting, and it's pretty interesting to know like what the new um, arc is for this season is basically Bill's dimension invading yes. their world. I I can't. I was watching this episode, and I was like, I can't believe how much more complex this show has gotten since last season. Last season, it was just there was all this mystery, and they kind of kept building on it over time, and you know the finale was really exciting and fantastic. And now they've introduced the character of Ford and it's like this show has gotten 10 times more complex and there's so much more going on. Right. He upped the stakes because before the journals were important, right? The journals and interpreting the journals and solving the mysteries and what are these creatures and whatever. Now you have the author and he already knows everything. So you have to up the stakes. There has to be something like once you have all that knowledge, it's like, what do you what do you face? You face something insurmountable and that's Bill Cipher. So I think that's pretty cool. And I think... I like the dual stories that were going on. There's uh, Dipper and Ford who are kind of bonding, right? Yes, Since they're uh, they're bonding more, I think, than Stan and Dipper ever did. Stan and Dipper bonded, especially the the journey through the Mindscape episode. You know, they they definitely bonded, but I don't feel like Dipper looks up to Stan the way that he looks up to Ford. Ford is the guy he wanted to meet. All last season, and now yeah. he's there in front of him. Well, you can tell like Mabel and Stan were closer yes. than Dipper yeah. and Stan. Like Mabel is kooky and crazy and stuff, and they 
and Stan and her died. Yes. And Dipper did not. So Dipper is closer to four. That's why they're fine. Yes. And you notice on the screen, one of the little secret things that was going through Dipper's head is, does Dad like me? And it said, does Ford like me? Yeah. It's very important. To Stan him. was not. The <laughs> fact that was, no, yeah. <laughs> Stan was not on the screen. So, um, so in a nutshell, so we had um, two plots going on. We had Mabel, Wendy, Candy, and Brenda trying to get a lock of unicorn's hair for something that Ford wanted to make to protect the mystery shack from Bill. Yeah, to prevent to, Bill from coming in no, to read their and minds. reading their yeah. minds. So, and then we had um, Dipper and Ford doing their own thing where Ford was trying to get Dipper to protect his mind from, from Bill. From Bill invading because that's the biggest danger that they have right now. Yeah. Is that Bill can still get into Dipper's mind and take the the portal thing. The rift. The rift. The rip, yeah. yeah, the rift that he has so, we had both of those storylines going on. Obviously, Mabel's storyline was the, the lighthearted one. And I find it really cute that Wendy is now part of her, like, girl gang, even though they're all younger than Wendy. She's like, yeah, you know, you know, I'll come hang out with you or whatever. So that was that was cool. And that was pretty much the whole the whole um, Mabel storyline was just them, you know, back and forth with this silly unicorn character. Well, you and... can't gloss over it because it, it's, it's making fun of all those, like, those things from My Little Pony, like the unicorns are sure. standing in front of a rainbow. And really, like, that was making it, it was definitely, I'm sure it was jabbing at My Little Pony a little bit, but it was also jabbing at, um, you know, kind of all 80s and 90s girl cartoons and girl stuff. Yeah, it was all you like, had to be pure of heart. Yeah, and all this silly stuff. Um, so that was funny because Mabel goes crazy because the unicorn tells her, oh, you're not pure of heart, you can't have a lock of my hair. And so Mabel spends the entire episode trying to to do good deeds. Do good deeds because her whole thing is that she likes to be kind to people. So that was that. And then in the meantime, you have um, Dipper is starting to get suspicious of Ford because he doesn't know what his relationship was with Bill. So um, basically, so <laughs> Mabel finds out that the unicorn was lying to her the whole time and that unicorns can't see into people's hearts. And so uh, <laughs> Mabel and her group decide to just have a fist yeah. fight with the unicorns that we don't fight. actually get to see, but that kind of makes it funnier. And uh, they do wind up with a lock of unicorn hair. They had to get it the hard way. And uh, so Bill, uh, we find out that, that Ford, the big reveal was that Ford and Bill had an agreement to a certain point because Bill posed as a muse and he pretended to go he, he went to Ford and told him you know I inspire a great mind every hundred years and I'll inspire you but you have to grant me access to your mind yeah and so um, at, at, you find out part of the reason why McGucket went crazy was because he accidentally saw what Bill was really planning which was to unleash his dimension into our dimension. Well, I, know, I, I still don't get that part of the plot. So McGucket dipped into the nightmare dimension for a second, and he went cuckoo. Like, what he saw is, is terrified him. And Ford went through the portal for years. He was in there surviving. So either Ford is, like, the toughest man ever, and nothing phases him, or I don't understand that. Or like, somehow Bill is able to kind of, manipulate what people see when they go in there yeah I they're not 100 percent clear about how that works well, unless we i seen, missed something we haven't seen what's on the other side but i'm assuming when you open the door it goes to the same place it's yes. going to that nightmare dimension so uh so ford uh finds out what what bill was planning and uh goes after him and he says you you know we had a deal blah 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 and um you know that was that so Ford felt betrayed by Bill, and now he knows how dangerous he is. So he tells all this to Dipper, and Dipper feels very, uh, he feels a, a lot of weight on his shoulders now because Bill is extremely dangerous, probably more dangerous than he ever thought he was. And because before, I think Bill was kind of depicted as a trickster and, you know, an imp. Well, because he didn't know what he wanted. You don't know what he wanted now. We absolutely know what his deal is. We know what he's trying to do. 
What he stands to gain from doing this, I'm not really sure, unless he would be kind of the ruler of both realms, I guess. Right. Maybe I missed something. I don't know, but... Why did they explain it? They didn't get too far into the details beyond the basic idea of what he was trying to do. So, um, so yeah, and then uh, Mabel and her pals come back with the unicorn hair. And the best line in the entire episode is um, they dump some treasure on the table that the unicorns gave them. As a bribe to leave. As, as a bribe to leave. And Stan comes running through and grabs the money and, and screams money. money and leaves. Yeah. So, you know, Stan didn't really have much of a, a role this time he around. He just had the pug. He had the weird, he they had pugs. that weird pug thing going on in the beginning. Um, but I, I'm a little sad this season only because I feel like Stan is taking a bit of a backseat except with the, the campaign episode. But other than that, I feel like, you know, we're focusing so much on Ford this season that Stan is kind of on the back burner right now. But, you know, that could change. And um, I don't know if I feel like Ford is a permanent character. I feel like he may just be this season. Well, probably. he's uh, he, he knows too much and he knows how to handle everything. And that that's, doesn't make for a good uh, uh, plot arc because they've been trying to solve everything themselves, understanding what's in the journals and then finding the things they need to, right. make, to, to resolve whatever situation they're in. Now they have Ford and Ford yeah. instantly like, what do we need to stop they, Bill? What they do we only to had this? so much information up until Ford came onto the scene. Yeah. So now, you know, he knows a lot. I'm kind of wondering when they resolve this particular arc where they're going to go from there because... That's kind of it. That's kind of as unless they introduce something new. That's kind of it right now. Is the whole thing with Bill and the journals? And, I mean, the journals. We already know the mystery of the journals. The journals are were forts, you know. So, you know, right. we'll see. But uh, I don't think there's. I could be wrong. I don't think there's too many episodes left this season. So, we'll see what happens. But um, I thought it was it was a pretty good episode. More more plot points revealed. So. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was it was a good one, and you know, the the B plot is always is usually pretty entertaining. So, well, yeah, the unicorn the, part, part the, the the mind machine and learning the truth about Bill was the big deal of this episode. Like what Bill wanted and what his relationship to Ford was, and that was super important because we always got hints in the journal, like the journal guy trusted Bill and then he didn't trust Bill, and now you know, oh. Ford wrote the journal, so you're waiting for that, right. right? And now you see it. It's one of those things where I'm sure if you go back and watch older episodes, in hindsight, certain things are going to make more sense now, especially relating to the journals, now that you know the context of their relationship. Mm -hmm. But one thing I love about this show and also Steven Universe is the fact that they're always able to balance heavy stuff with more lighthearted stuff so that it's not like completely just dragging everything down with emotion and, you know, there are definitely some, some emotional episodes of both shows, but they're usually able to balance them out pretty well. I, I don't think Gravity Falls is that emotional. I think I thought that whole the, the thing with um Stan when when they were opening the portal and Mabel had to choose whether she was gonna believe Dipper or Stan was pretty that was kinda rough. Right. Well you you have a dramatic cliffhanger where everything hangs in the balance for one character versus all the emotion that's in Steven Universe, like this is a very different thing. Yeah, well, Steven Universe, I would say overall is a lot heavier than than Gravity Falls is. Steven Universe deals with some really, really heavy stuff. Yeah. But um, I think does that pretty much cover everything? We, we yeah. Pretty good. There was no turtles. There was no this turtles week. this week, so we will discuss Ninja Turtles. Uh, this Sunday's Ninja Turtles, we will discuss next week as well as. Uh, whatever shows we get next week that are new, we're going to get new Steven Universe. No uh, new Gravity Falls next week. Yeah, that scheduling um, is uh, terrible. And I think we'll get new regular show next week. So we'll have a few things to talk about. So we'll we'll cover all that, all that stuff next week. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. So I'll see you next week.